All right, it's been, been a minute since I made a video with baseball cards, so I'm going to do just that here and uh, talk about the upcoming National a little bit, among other things. Um, I don't know, let's kind of pick some random cards here. What we got going on? It's a Gary Carter rookie card from the uh, bulk overflow case. So I, I am going to be all but certain attending the national again this year. I missed last year. Um, and I was an AC two years ago. That was the first time. Um, so I'm heading out I'm driving uh, Wednesday and that's about a seven hour, seven hour trip. Um, Sport Flicks Mickey Mantle card here. And so I, I plan to arrive like, um, I don't know, maybe, well, it depends on when I leave. Either I leave maybe 6.30 at the earliest, anywhere between 6.30 and 9. So, I mean, there's no rush to get there. I'm not going uh, on Wednesday uh, to the show. I'm going to basically attend Thursday and uh, Friday and then head back on Saturday. So, uh, you know, goals. I do have one particular card uh i'd like to get and um it's a tiffany viscal rookie card it's the 1915 cracker jack walter johnson and what i'm doing i'm looking for like a just like a nice one or maybe a two depending on the cost i have kind of a sense of of what they would go for uh based on vcp um you know, I appeal, I will pay a premium for in the low grades, as I've proven in the past. Um, so we'll see. I mean, last time I went to <laughs> Bernie Williams, last time I went to the National two years ago, I had a plan. <laughs> and uh, as it would happen, I walked out with nothing. <laughs> I didn't buy anything. I ended up getting one of the cards, um, you know, at REA auction, uh, maybe a couple months later. I got a little vein of 76 is going. Let me do something different. Dale Murphy. Um, it was the, um, oh, what was it? It was the uh, 1951 Bowman Roy Campanella. And the other one was a um, 34, 35 Diamond Stars, Jimmy Fox. Now, that card I saw... Um, but ungraded and, and just not with the eye appeal I was looking to get. Um, and the same applies to the uh, applied to the uh, Campanella. So anyway, I subsequent, subsequently acquired both uh, the Campanella PSA eight from REA, and then I did a little side deal offline um, with a dealer on Instagram for the. Um, Jimmy Fox. <laughs> so. So we shall see. Oh, gosh. Harold Baines. Oh, man. I'd love to... I think... Some people maybe feel the same as they get to be a certain age. I'd love to downsize out of all... A lot of what you see in this... This case here. Hanging on to it because, you know, my son is into collecting... And, um, you know, I may just give it to him. And you could thank him for me now being interested in football cards. Uh, at least, you know, these relic cards from National Treasures, flawless. Because, you know, I bought a bunch of um, junk wax era packs, tons of them. I mean, literally, I bought like two, 300 packs. And they're still like maybe about 70 or 80 to open still. But just opening those packs and going through and seeing all the... All the players I used to watch when I was a lot more into football uh, in the uh, you know the mid to late '80s and then the '90s, and I would say be part of early 2000s, and it just kind of my interest sort of waned. Um, but you know, guys like you know Michael Irvin and Bo Jackson, Jerry Rice, you know those guys, and thinking back to when I used to watch you know John Madden and Pat Summerall. Um, you know, later on, Greg Gummel and Phil Sims when they're in the, when they were in the booth. Um, there's Monday Night Football with Al Michaels and Dan Deerdorf and Frank Gifford. Just kind of, 
you know, got me back into into that particular time period. And so I'm buying some cards. Uh, this is an eight. I got eight, nine, and ten of this guy. Um, and I actually have a couple I haven't shown yet. And my son wanted me to get him something at the National. So here's what, what I did was I actually went on eBay and I found like a patch card of Thurman Thomas for like 15 bucks, National Treasures. And um, I, basically I'm gonna like, it's, it's being delivered and then I'll just like give it to him when I get back. So yeah, hey, I got this free at the show because I cannot spend time looking through, I don't know. It's unlikely I'm gonna find something affordable uh, for him being a six year old and um, There'll be a ton of that. There'll be a ton of like dollar boxes there, I imagine, and you know, cheap patch and relic cards, cheap autos. But figured I'd get him a you know a Hall of Famer a guy who's already proven himself, Thurman Thomas. And so he's got that. And then I got my daughter um, like these Squish Mellow packs of cards, Squish Mellows or some some franchise or toy line um, that she likes. So um, I'll come back say, hey, I got this stuff for you guys. And then, but it really, I. <laughs> it was delivered ahead of time, and and that'll be that. So just trying to do the right thing and come back with something for the kids. I um, I watched Beverly Hills Cop 4. I loved it. I I got Netflix for a month. I got to cancel it. I think I've watched it four times. Um, just, yeah, you know, I was looking forward to that. I love that character. I always watch the uh, other ones when they show them on like, you know, AMC or something, you know. Um, and I was really um, uh, glad to see they, they brought back the classic music, you know, Glenn Fry, Bob Seger. Um, I think it was the Pointer Sisters had that one. Anyway, just kind of, you know, the nostalgia, you know, nostalgia trip. I really like that character, Axel Foley. Um, the third one was, eh, you know, I... I actually didn't mind it, but I understand why a lot of people hated it. I think one of the biggest problems with the third one was that it was PG-13. Um, and it just, I don't know, I think Eddie Murphy maybe phoned phoned in his performance for that one 30 years ago. But this one definitely is, is much better. Um, so I think if you enjoyed the first two, I think you'd enjoy this fourth one. Um, was Gary Sanchez. Where is this guy now? Yeah. 2010, my gosh, this card is 14 years old already. Oh, another one, Miguel Andujar. Oh my gosh. Definitely changed my strategy nowadays. We've got a couple of ones here. We got, we got Munson and Jackson. Stuff like this, I don't mind owning. Um, I don't buy the modern rookies. I think the last prospect i mean they'd be over here I mean, this is this kind of goes in ascending order as far as well here's dominguez as far as like um here's austin wells but this was cheap this is like 20 25 dollars so i took a flyer on this but i would love to i think i have like a vein of mike trout's here i sent him to cgc just for the hell of it i don't know here's volpe so stuff, <laughs> stuff like this. I mean, now this might have been fifteen dollars, but you know it adds up. Um, here's a trout. Oh, these are a couple of good. No, this is strawberry and Gooden's first professional baseball cards, I believe. Tidewater tides, and this is the Jackson Mets, I think. Gerald Strawberry. Um. Yeah, so, anyhow, I keep grabbing the same stuff over and over again here. I'm just trying to be random. A couple of 85 favorites. Don Mattingly. There's a Clemens. There's something stuck in there? No. And there's Dwight Gooden. And it's off-centered. Purchased during a time when I didn't really notice such things. You know, I looked at that. So I want a nine. I want a nine. And, uh, this is a nine. And, well, I don't particularly care for that centering. But 
Kind of the same thing here with Daryl. Daryl Strawberry. Oh, this is, I guess this would be kind of a rookie card. It's 84 glossy, top sunday. It's a nice looking card. I think you would send in like a, what was it, a certain amount of wrappers or something, and you would get a set of um, six at a time or whatever. There was maybe 60 of them. Back. Let's take a look and see if I have one here. Oh, that's great. All right. Well, I don't know why no one Ryan's back there. Is it 82? Yeah, like these Ryan's, for example, what I should have done was instead of buying the sort of Fleer and Donruss, you know, like not all of them, but I did buy a few of them. Um, what I should have done when I was building this out was, you know, pass over these cards. I mean, that money should have been put towards like the 85 tops PSA 10. Instead, I went with a Tiffany 9. Um, but honestly, that 86 tops would always be, I mean, that, that card, if I wanted to get straight 10s through the decade, that would be, I don't think I, I just, that was a, very, still is a very expensive card in a 10 because of those black borders. So uh, with that, I also went with a nine, uh, Tiffany. His 81 tops card, uh, I have that in nine here. And so yeah, in the 82 is in a nine. I started tens with 83. That one's been selling for like what, five, $6,000. Uh, but even, even for the last 10 years or more, the 81 tops, Nolan Ryan has been like a, like a thousand dollar card. Um, I look back in VCP and it like it's literally like till going back to maybe 2012, it was like a thousand twelve hundred dollar card. So it was always expensive, and then you know, just recently it just really shot up. Um, people are starting to appreciate these older these older tops cards. Um, Donruss Elite. So I'll grab a few more. What the heck, man? I feel like. I feel like here's a Henderson. Which one is this? this is a, just a basic tops 10. I might have purged some of these. Griffey. I submitted, I bought a bunch of 89 Donruss, maybe cello boxes, and maybe whack dirt cheap. I mean, they were like, you know, pre COVID, you can get them for like, like $10 or something, $10 to $15. Maybe shipping uh, was another five or $10. So, I bought a fair amount and I got, I got like 30 Kurt Schilling rookies out of that mess, but I got a couple of Griffies. I'm not sure if this was one of them, but I sent two off to PSA. One did come back, the elusive 10, and then one also came back a nine and that, that might've been it. Um, Flare Glossy. Yeah, see like stuff? I just, I just, I just talked about this card recently. Um, I would like to maybe try to debulk, debulk the collection. Here's Henderson. I think I have to, do I have this in a Tiffany or do I have this also in a 10 maybe? I think I bought it in a nine a long time ago and then later repurchased it in a 10 when I was building the run, which I never finished because oddly enough, his later year cards, career cards are super expensive. Um, graded 10. Millie like Harrison, take a stack here. I got a Henderson here. See another Henderson. These are what, both from 90? No, this is 93, 94. Well, here's Nolan Ryan, tops gold. I wanted this in a PSA 10 and I could not find one uh, forever. And so I found this 9.5, which might have been, oh, geez, not that, maybe $50, maybe less. And the goal was to potentially crack this out and submit it to PSA. I'd be fine with a 9 in a PSA slab, but like anything, I set my mind to, I never follow through on it, um, especially when it comes to sending stuff in for grading. But uh, a, a tough card. Um, and this is not even really, it's sort of like a commemorative card, right? It celebrates 27 seasons, 1994. There's all the stats on back, and I'll be damned if I could read this. <laughs> yeah, 
this is Nolan Ryan. Um, do a few more here. You see a lot of familiar. It's a Henderson. Here's Vlad. Bought it in a nine. Here's another Henderson. Uh, why did I buy this? Because they're... Oh, because his Topps traded card doesn't picture him and it doesn't interest me. It's not it's like a different guy. I think this might have been his first card available after the Topps traded card. And so, I don't know. It wasn't expensive. Maybe 60, 70 bucks. Soriano. And Soriano. Uh, all right, I guess I'll wrap that up. So... So, yeah, I guess we'll see what the National brings. Uh, looking for the one card. I wouldn't be surprised if I walked out with nothing, or maybe I do find it, and then I have some extra left over to maybe get something else along with it. So uh, I guess we will see. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you later.